Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me on the surface of EVE with my solar-powered plane. It's my newest invention, totally original. No, I'm joking. Of course, I know many of these things have been done before. There's been lots of solar-powered planes in Kerbal Space Program, but it got me thinking about their actual use, because on Kerbin, yeah, I guess, they're useful for having, like, a really long range, but you, know, you just kind of want to die after a while. So I was actually thinking that it would make a lot of sense on an atmospheric world that doesn't have oxygen, because the reason you can't use a jet engine on EVE or DUNA is there's no oxygen in the atmosphere, or at least not enough to power the engines, uh, well, to, you know, be taken through intakes to power jet engines. So a solar power plane makes a lot of sense. Obviously this isn't like a lot of solar power planes that are built. Um, I decided to go with the propeller engine, which is from the fire spitter pack, as is all the mods I'm using in this. This is just using Fire Spitter and Hyper Edit, because I didn't fly this out here. Um, but yeah, you could do this with an ion engine if you so desired, but I just kind of felt like using a propeller engine, because a propeller engine is more efficient with its thrust in KSP, and uh, it doesn't use any fuel, uh, because this is an electric propeller. You can use uh, fuel-powered ones, but obviously no air on EVE. So anyway, uh, this probably wouldn't, well, there's not a huge amount of atmospheric worlds. I guess it's pretty much an even Duna or Jewel if you really wanted it. Uh, <laughs> but even Duna, where well, this would work. And uh, I picked Eve because it's closer to the sun, so my uh, solar panels will work better. Although it's a very thick atmosphere, so I doubt I'll get as much power as I wanted. Um, and it has a very thick atmosphere to provide much lift. So I'm just going to take this off and talk about why I think this could be a good idea. Uh, okay, take the brakes off. Oh, the propeller's already on. Okay, well, anyway. It accelerates really fast, which is much nicer than an ion engine, I will tell you that much. Uh, yeah, and this is producing 40 kilonewtons of thrust, but is burning most of my electric charge. So I'll have to throttle this down to... I think it can do about 20 kilonewtons of thrust. Um, and be in equilibrium. Yeah, there we go. We're actually gaining electric charge. Thirk, 20 kilonewtons. That's pretty much perfect amount of thrust. And yeah, that's quite a lot. And I can fly through the atmosphere at about, well, you can see, 27 meters a second, or 28 if I, well, I can probably go much faster if I'm, oh, I'm going downward now. That's probably why I was going faster. Uh, but yeah, you could see this as a viable way of flying across the, um, uh, across the surface of EVE or even Duna if you wanted. This doesn't actually have any science packages, it's mainly just batteries and physicsless parts, um, since the solar panels don't weigh anything. Um, they do in the menu, and they will when you're building in, like, career mode, but uh, when you actually put them out into the world, they don't technically weigh anything, because they're physicsless to reduce the amount of, kind of, lag. Um, talking of lag, there's probably a little more lag than uh, there should be here, because of what I have planned for... Ah, oh, it's just over there. Anyway, um, yeah. So you could put a science package on this and go to many biomes if you really wanted to. Obviously, you could just, like, time warp a little bit, and ooh, this puts a lot of stress on it in the Eevee atmosphere. Uh, but yeah, it's a, I like this concept because I've seen quite a few uh, Duna planes done, either with liquid fuel or just gliding. But using a propeller engine or even an ion engine, although I doubt you get enough thrust to really make it work in EVE, but maybe Duna, but you probably wouldn't get enough uh, power. Uh, so yeah, I think a propeller engine's really good, and I do like Fire Spitter for providing pro propeller engines. It's not very spacey, but it uh, works quite well here. And you can also mount this on the back and invert its thrust. Um, yeah, set reverse thrust. And you do have to use, like, static solar panels, because if you were to use normal solar panels, they would just break off in the drag force, uh, because that's how the game works. So yeah, this does actually work as a plane. You can see we're not moving particularly fast, but uh, and it's not super maneuverable. Uh, and you can just kind of pull around a bit, and you do kind of... Yeah, it's not super maneuverable. I'm going to try to land this, actually. I doubt... Oh my god! Ooh, that was so foolish! Ooh, don't shut off your thrust. Uh, yeah, but if you include lots of batteries like I can, you can get periods of much higher thrust if you really wanted. But landing on EVE is relatively easy because it has a nice cushiony, very thick atmosphere. Um, and uh, yeah, that means landing's a little less hard, although you will stop dead. And uh, these like wide wings, yeah, there's quite a lot of wing surface. It's probably be best to have kind of like long wings with a short front bit to reduce drag. Uh, that's another problem with the propeller engine, lots of drag. But that's also a problem with uh, air intakes, not that you could possibly use them here. Unless you figured out how to burn whatever the hell is in uh, EVE's atmosphere. But anyway, as you're probably looking at this, you're like, okay, that's great, Peter, but what's its what's its real purpose? Well, obviously you could put a science package on it. Um, you put, uh, if you were really hard strapped for mass, you could just put like a, a thermometer and a seismometer and like the gravioli thing and that sort of stuff and fly them around. But you're probably going to want more science than that, so you're probably thinking, how much payload could I really get on one of these? I mean, could I carry a man? 
I'm too far from my... <laughs> Okay, just imagine this is like a really quick switch to my next plane. I'm gonna have to quick load and switch to it. Could I carry a man or a Kerbal? Why, yes, you could, viewer. You can carry a Kerbal, and that's what I've done here. I've created a manned aircraft, um, and it, well, manned even even atmosphere craft, I guess. And the only man crazy enough to fly this mad invention is, of course, Jebediah Kerman. He looks right at the floor because he always looks down. Uh, <laughs> anyway, let's just get this up in the air. Okay, this does fly. This works. I mean, obviously, I need to throttle down a bit. But if you throttle up to max uh, to, for takeoff, then you take off pretty easily and then throttle down to half. And then you're getting power back. Uh, you want to find 20 kilonewtons. I, that works surprisingly well. But yeah, look, that's a guy. Much slower. And you do have to use the lightest pod. Uh, I used the very lightest pod. And I included a few more solar panels, but this works! You could actually use this as a viable way of traversing EVE. And you may be thinking, 20 meters a second, Peter. You're a putz. I'm not gonna do that. Um, and also, apparently, most of my viewers say putz now. But anyway, um, if you think about a rover, in stock KSP at least, uh, they'll travel maybe maximum 20 meters a second. And imagine how many quick saves you're gonna have to use on, uh, on EVE, on the bumpy... Well, this is actually pretty pretty flat, but there's going to be some bumpy stuff, and probably Duna more than anything else, if you watch the Kerbal Polar Expedition 3 with HRC Gaming, you'll know that uh, your rover will fall apart a lot. So you're going to need to either quick save a lot, or if you're a real hardcore, you're going to need a lot of rovers. Um, and this travels at actually a little faster than a rover, so this is actually a pretty good way, if, if you're really committed to, you know, just doing stuff really the long way like I am, because I just like, I just like looking at stuff, I don't know, I'm very easily amused. This is a good way of getting your Kerbals around. I'm not sure if it'll work on Duna, but um, I have a feeling we could find out. Yeah, let's just try, let's try try and just put it down on a, a Duna. I didn't actually plan on putting this in the um, uh, in the video, but it's piqued my curiosity. You may be thinking you won't get enough solar power, Peter, and I'm pretty sure I won't. However, it has a much thinner atmosphere, so it might be viable. But who knows? All right, so I'm gonna need to use the ship lander. Hyper Edit is great for if you're a video maker. Uh, Duna, Duna, Duna. There we go. You may be wondering, some of you, my more avid viewers, why the hell am I not putting up uh, Outer Planets today? That is because I am very busy this weekend, and uh, I thought I'd bring you this nice little video. Okay, <laughs> just a quick thing. Uh, land here. Landing, please. No, don't land here. Oh my god, that was so not the right button. Oh my god, why is my engine still on? Ooh, ooh, that's real bad. Oh, that's real bad. Okay, yeah, Hyper Edit will land it for you. Wow, nice pick, Peter. I might warp into day first. Is Ike in the sky? Ike is in the sky, and it'll stay in the sky, because Ike's uh, on one of those weird orbits where it just pretty much stays in the sky. I guess it's synchronized to the rotation of Earth, so... Uh, not Earth, I mean Duna, so like a Duna stationary orbit. It's actually not quite, but I hear it's very close. We'll find out now. Uh, I want the sun right overhead, please. I mean, obviously. Yeah, I will warp till it's right overhead. I want optimal conditions. Yeah, see, it doesn't move that much. Damn, we're gonna have an Ike eclipse. Fuck. <laughs> anyway, okay, right, well, we still have the sun before it drifts behind Ike. Let's try this out. Let's see how much thrust I can get. Oh my god, that was so foolish! Why did I leave the brakes on? <laughs> I make mistakes sometimes. Even I make mistakes. Actually, that's not bad. I thought it would be way worse. Let's see if we can outdo 20 kilonewtons. And I do prefer Duna to Eve. Duna is my favorite planet in KSP. In real life, my favorite planet is, well, you know, Earth. Uh, <laughs> I'm quite partial to Earth, and I've just realized I forgot a tailplane on this. Um, that's why it's so unstable. You may have noticed. Oh my god, I'm traveling incredibly fast. That's why... I wow, this is super viable on Duna! Oh my god, I really should have brought a tailplane. That was inherently foolish! Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, so this is a really good way of getting around Duna. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so I actually didn't expect this because, you know, apparently I don't test things now. Um, obviously you need to put a tailplane on or it won't be uh, stabilized in the yaw motion, but luckily I have a bit of torque to stabilize me. 200 meters a second. I doubt it'll break Mach 1, um, but Mach 1 in Dune is probably very, very s slow. Oh, maybe I have broken Mach 1. Yeah, in l yeah, it'll be a lower, um, uh, a lower thingy. You know what I mean. Yeah, lower... Um, sound speed, speed of sound in a uh, thinner atmosphere. But yeah, okay, so um, I may have been entirely uh, wrong in picking uh, Duna, uh, Eve. 
uh, but it works very well on Duna. This is unequivocally better than the Rover. This is the perfect way of getting your Kerbals around. Um, I'm actually probably going to use this in the future. Obviously, you could do this with Nihil Engine, but if you really want the best results, I'd use Fire Spitter. Uh, 20.4 kilonewtons of thrust, 218 meters a second, a really beautiful shot of the surface. This is like a surface scanning vessel. That's what I designed it for, obviously. Uh, yeah, that's totally what it is. And you could totally put a science package on this. Um, apparently, I'm slowing down now. Why? Oh, I throttled down? Apparently, I just accidentally hit X. Okay. Well, that's how it goes sometimes. But yeah, there we go. That's pretty much uh, everything I have to say. But I really like that you can do this. Um, and I'm pretty gobsmacked that it works so well on Duna. But yeah, feel free to, you know, just uh, play around with this and see if you can beat my uh, airspeed record and you can't deorbit. That's I'm talking from a standing start. Uh, I guess you could use liquid fuel. Well, whatever. I'm not saying anything. But still, uh, well, I guess I could throttle up to max. See how fast we can push this before I end the video. But yeah, totally viable. Uh, so if you're putting a Duna base down, uh, send in your order to the Territorial Arctic Protection Entente Industries for your solar-powered plane. I will see you next time.